When we get settled in, would you start with the roll call, please? We can start with these roll calls. We go ahead and settle in there. <laughs> no rush. There's not exactly a large amount of public waiting for stuff. That's my roll. Here. Yeah. So makes it very easy. I know. See, if I had just emailed everyone that I wasn't coming to, we could have canceled. <laughs> All right. Mike Tabler. Absolutely. I'll need. Absolutely. Tell me, just him on Zoom. He's participating via Zoom, which means he can't vote. But there shouldn't be anything to vote on. Yes. Well, you can. Is everybody muted, or can we unmute him? Tom is muted currently, but I believe he can unmute himself. Yes. Can. He might not want to. <laughs> there, Tom, can you hear us? Okay. Okay. All right, and then I have Jenny Manson here. All right, Virginia Lewis here and Brittany Cooper here. All right. All right. We have three members of the board present, so we are able to hold a full meeting. We have Scott Sanders from Delaware Regional Planning Commission present. We're very happy to have him back after missing a month. Um, we have copies of the stuff that you emailed. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have no other officials present. We have no other public presence. So we will not have any questions from the public. Um, we have nobody except Tom on Zoom. So I'm not gonna go through the procedures for Zoom access. Um, reports from the Zoning Commission and staff. I have nothing. Mike obviously has nothing. Tom, do you have anything to report from strategic planning? No. That was a no from Tom, who seems to be having some voice difficulties. And I heard him. I heard him. But he seems to be doing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes yeah. you can. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we will resume our old business with Scott which was to continue the review of the um, items that Scott has submitted for R2 zoning and PRD zoning. Um, Scott, well, take it away. Sorry, it was mostly R2 and then the procedures, but then the procedures were in the same art document as the PRD, so. Okay. So I don't, I don't know, it, it took me a hard, it was hard to get going again. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I did a lot of stuff like right after I got back from the last meeting. Right. And then I realized, well, I think I did everything that I needed to do at that point. Um, so I'd already done the R2. So what I sent you was what I already done and that what I had already done. Okay. Plus a cleaner version just to take out some of those deleted parts. But then I realized that we were still working from the big table. And I just made sure that the plan procedures reflected all those changes. So you probably would want to go through R2 and just give it maybe a final. I'd say if we can finish R2 tonight, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. Although that did bring us to one of Tom's questions from the past meeting. He had said, if the goal is to eliminate R2, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, if the goal is to eliminate R2, just make it those existing parcels, then how are we as a township going to service Small parcels. smaller parcels once sewer comes in? Because we don't really have a district that does that. And so is our only way then for people to do a planned district where they can get more density? Or is that something where... We, legally we can just leave it like that or are we going to want to add something in in the future and maybe we don't want to maybe we still want to do r2 as its own thing because some of these are not even close to an acre nor do they have sewer but do something that is like a one acre a true one acre with sewer so. do we have to 
I, I don't know. That might Do be more a question to? for you. Do we, we have, have to, to provide some sort of smaller acreage parcel for the township? Or are the fact that we have, oh, well, I was, thinking the, you needed, I was like, thinking the plan district. You need you like have a 25 acre minimum. minimum. Hmm. I, th I think once we get sewers, we we will have a lot of pushback from people to have smaller lot sizes. And to me, ideally, mm -hmm. I would want to push them mm -hmm. to planned districts because then we have more control over it. Personally. But that would require us changing the acreage limit. I don't know. But anyways, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to have planned districts without a large amount of acreage yeah. since you have to leave a certain amount free. And if you're just an existing AR1 five acre lot and you want to split, you know, that's a really that that's one owner just wanting to split off land for a kid or something. And that seems mm -hmm. cumbersome to have to go through the plan district route. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then so I'm just I'm only thinking about this, and I know it came up, but I'm only now thinking about it because we're talking about because <laughs> mm -hmm. you so you could have almost take one of your existing districts, well, your PRD, you have a PRD district which doesn't have as much open space as a conservation district, and you could you could either change it for those smaller users. But limit it to only certain, like you wouldn't want somebody with 50 acres to do one based on your details. And you're probably going to get burned no matter what you do, because maybe you say, well, you, you can only have 10 acres. Well, then somebody's going to take their 30 acre site and it's chop it into three it tens, into three and then they're going to try to do three. Yeah. Which we have actually had happen in. And we did discuss that at one point, you know, taking and just reducing, leaving the PRCD as the larger parcels and the PRD as the smaller parcels. Mm -hmm. But then we run into that issue where nobody has to do a PRCD because they could split. And you could leave your PRD, which we're about to get to, right? Whatever density it's at, which is 1.5, and maybe make the lot size a little smaller. So the idea would be, well, from a density standpoint, developers would rather do the conservation subdivision, even with the larger um, open space, but then the PRD could have a fairly low density, but still give people that option and have a smaller lot size. Did that just talk in a circle, sort of? I guess your question, though, sort of is legally, do we have to offer an option for smaller, right? Yeah, and I meant to answer that. I mean, you know, you have to allow for all kinds of uses in your jurisdiction, but I don't, I don't know that you have to allow every possible combination. So if we have a two and a half acre, you know, FR1, is that, is that good enough? And then if people are wanting to sell their land to develop you know you have to talk to your neighbors and you all sell to a developer together and then they can yeah, develop that's, that's putting a, a lot of pressure on well yeah then, but i mean that would be an option that they would have if they're wanting to move out of the township you know developers will be looking for stuff like that yeah, not for individual i mean five acres here and there spread all over the place that's well not, not like developers really. probably not I, I agree with joni i think I think it's more likely um, families with a single parcel, two or five acres, would want to divide it so that they could build another residence for children or parents or whatever. Um, and I would like to see some mechanism for them to do that, but I think it's got to it's it's got to be on a sewer in a sewer district, and we're not going to be there that quick. I think we can agree that we need an an R1 or whatever we're going to call it, residential district, comparable to AR1, comparable to FR1, it'll just be R1, one net acre. <clears throat> but we have time, I think, to work out the details of that. Yeah, that was the other thing I was going to say is that it'll be, I mean, the focus should be on getting yeah. through this, and then that's yeah. on the menu for. But if you look at the the R2 that we, we have, um, it was already saying 
not less than one net acre um, and with sewers. Yeah, so I think our R2 is what eventually we're going to want. We just have a, tons of non-conforming, only non-conforming listed as R2 currently. I don't think we have that many listed as R2 once you take out the Harlem and Center Village lots. Well, there, there's this list. So, I mean, it's not huge. And I haven't gone through that list to um, see which ones of those are actually in the other. Where I, put it. I didn't think any of these were in those historic districts. I thought they were all outside. Oh, yeah, the Tibbs subdivision, Beasel, and the Duncan Glen one, those are all outside. So however many is on that list. You have the whole code. Five, oh, five, it's been a while now, so I forget. One of those is an overlay. There's, 50, there's 53 um, addresses on the or, or parcels on the list. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I think we've been heading in the direction of putting these as basically non-conforming lots into an R2 district where they will automatically conform at whatever size or frontage they have. Um, and I would think, yes, we can build an R1 either using some of the verbiage or mix and matching verbiage from FR1 um, and create a district which has smaller lot sizes, different setbacks, different frontage requirements, but basically the same usages and require um, um, uh, sewers, um, minimum house sizes, I suppose, and and maximum coverage and and let it go. I think it's mainly going to be used by families uh, to build another house on their lot, not by developers who would be looking for bigger parcels, I would think. But could it be used by developers to just build a whole bunch of one acre lots? I it's, don't forget it's one net acre. So it's yeah. likely they could not put more than four. I mean, could you take 25 acres and divide, you know, split it into one acre lots and and build a suburb? Um, I would try to put verbiage in that would that would make that uneconomic. Yeah. I yeah, that's I would I would agree. Yeah. I just don't want I it, what, in having developers come into the township and develop large lots, I want them to almost have to do some kind of planned district so we have some kind of control over it or <laughs> use one of the overlays Yeah. versus just doing a bunch of splits into lots like they did on 605. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that was, um, you know, they intentionally split it so that the individual parcels were below 10 acres, I think, or five acres, and then and then went out and either sold them off as five acre lots or split them in half to two and a half acre lots. Um, and it was it you know it was uh, um, a way of avoiding what the zoning resolution intent was. Um, and they really butchered that that piece of ground, and I would not like to see that happen again. Mm -hmm. So for a straight lot split, though, somebody just has to go to the county, right? They don't have to come to us for a lot split. Um, Not yeah. to the zoning commission, but to the to the township. I mean, to make sure that the lot conforms to zoning. So it has to be zoned properly, right? Yeah. It has to be zoned zoning. I mean, no, but because you start with the five acres, nobody's going to do a lot split until they rezone it to yeah. FR1. Yeah. And then they're going to, then they just have to go administratively through the office here. So I guess the thing that we have to watch for then, and we can't really ask them what their intention is, but if somebody comes in with a 50 acre AR1 and says, I want to zone FR1, you know, that's probably a red flag that they're wanting to just go in and. No, that's pretty and common, actually. Stuff. I mean, it's like Harlem Estates. Is that yeah. 
the, that's the title. Well, so I guess I shouldn't say FR1. If we do this new R1 or whatever, you know, that would be sort of an indication that they want to just go in and do splits, which, I mean, they still, in places like Harlem Estates, had to put a road in, which yeah. is an expense. And yeah. so they might still end up better off doing a planned district because then they can really shrink their lots and get more density in. And that's what Steiner did. I mean, they yeah. came originally for rezoning to FR. And they came they came around to the point that they would rather than rezone it to FR where they'd use the 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 PRCD as a as an overlay. Yeah. So I think as long as we as a commission are knowledgeable on those options and can say to them, hey, we think that economically you will end up being better off here, then hopefully we're not at as much risk of somebody just coming in and doing a straight split. And if we have these other good options, which I think we do now with a lot of our overlay districts, I mean, that's that's the reason for the creation of a lot of these, to give developers desirable options. And if somebody comes in with a 25-acre parcel that they've subdivided intentionally to get around the rules, um, I wouldn't hesitate to vote against it and to say, no, it does not meet the intent of the comprehensive plan or the 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 um the wording of the zoning resolution. And I would vote no and send that on to the trustees and let them come back to us with with a plan. So I think all in all, we've still probably covered our risk as much as we can. And so just eliminating R2 right now, or not eliminating it, but getting it to be just these existing lots and mm -hmm. moving on with the other later is probably mm -hmm. sufficient. I don't think that opens us up to too much risk. I'm okay with that. Okay. Scott looked like you wanted to say something. Well, just to confirm that we do say it's not intended to be expanded. It does. Yeah. It yeah. says the land areas. Yeah. 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 Just for the record, I'm shall not be expanded. Okay. What does it mean that note that the central village ad is indeed within the HCBR one? What does that, what does that mean? There was a, well, that'll come out. That's basically just. Oh, that's just like a note. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got one through to check yeah. to make sure these weren't in the historic districts where they <laughs> were already. Confirmed. Oh, that's a, okay. I'm not okay. familiar with the HCBR. Okay. Okay. I think we were, yeah, we were in the meeting. That question came up and I had to look it up. Yeah, and, now and I'm I not did sure send everybody an emailed copies of, of how we came up with yeah that boundary and okay, which I need to email you apparently because <laughs> you never did something. Get it? So, another another point, I'm sorry. The, separate from our meetings here, there was kind of a back and forth. I'm not sure if it was just Mike Cannon, Mike Kabler, and me with the zoning map. And trying to make sure that the zoning map was updated. Yeah. And that all kind of happened parallel with these meetings. So I think we I think we clarified that. Yeah. And then I print, yeah. Then I printed a big one up and I guess maybe at some point you guys hopefully. I think it's in the office, right? Yeah, I don't think we ever got any little copies or anything. Yeah. At that it's so hard to see in a little hard to, yeah. Well, I was gonna say, especially the that area there's a lot going on so scott the uh the six lots parcels that are in the center village ad um you're taking off the the r2 list because they're part of uh, the center village um historic district my is that my understanding yeah because that one is the one that is it applied when it was adopted, right? And the other yeah. one's an overlay that can be pulled down. The commercial one is an overlay. Yeah. But the residential one is, <laughs> they all got switched over, which nobody objected to because it meant that if they had their house burned down or something, they'd be allowed to rebuild. rebuild? Yeah. Yeah. So those those six parcels that are on your, uh, your list, I've got from June 23rd, 
with a map on one side and, and a list of parcels on the other. Um, those would not be part of R2 because they're part of Harlem Center Village Residential Historic District, whatever we call it. Correct. All right, so, so then we're not at 53, we're down to 47, but it's still a decent list. I mean, I guess it's another exercise we need to do is to make sure. And now there's a few versions, so I'm not, I'm, if someone could send me like the sheet and say on page three, make sure all of these are in this other district, then I'm, I can make. I'm looking at the other district right now, so hopefully I can. I don't know that it impacts the text here, but I want to make sure that the map is updated. And are we going to include uh, a list of the parcels and with their addresses, their plat, their parcel ID, and a map in this article as an appendix, maybe, so there's no doubt about which ones are in and which ones are out 20 years from now or 10 years from now? I mean, I, I, I would suggest that that we actually add that list of parcels into the into the article and say, yeah i think you're right i think that list of of parcels does need to go in and the ones that are listed as center village edition should probably come out what can i say so far all the 605 ones are definitely on this list you said Four, three, six. Okay, so all the all the ones listed on this this list that you gave us, Scott, mm -hmm. that are listed as Center Village Edition, were included in the Special Zoning District for Center Village plan. So they are in HCV R. So all those. Those six need to come off this list, and then this list should be attached to the R2. How is this list that you sent us in the zoning resolution, or is it at all? The list isn't, but it does specify that Center Village and Center Village Edition are the ones. Yeah, it, I just didn't know, like, if we're going to include this list, should we at some point go through and include the lists of the historic districts? Well, that, 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 what if the Center Village in Harlem had a number of parcels that don't have addresses because there's no building on them. Okay. So shouldn't we add parcel numbers to these then, this list? Mm -hmm. Oh, these have buildings except for a couple that are listed as vacant. So yeah, there's one with, one with no address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would suggest we add the parcel ID because that that you can trace the easiest Yes, agree. either even further eliminates confusion. I would agree. Is that easily doable? So say that again. I on I that take this table, list. can we add parcel ID? Oh, sure. So I don't. I think when we include this table in the R two district, I don't think we need the extra details that are in that last column. So if we could just make that parcel ID instead. Do we even want to include all the other stuff like the last, like year built size frontage? Is that really necessary? Well, I mean, hypothetically, the, that is on. The year, the year built gives you an idea that these were grandfathered. Okay. Except for the one from 2020. Oh, that's, never mind. that's, that's, that's a different one. <laughs> so. In that respect, I think it is important to have the year built because that that does show that it is grandfathered into whatever. So do we take out size and frontage because those are linked to the parcel ID on the auditor's website and just simply put the parcel ID? Isn't it all linked to the audit? Like, I, I, like you having, really need. I like having size and frontage just because this one table gives you a clear shot yeah. at you know, well, and they're already there, so I would say just change the last yeah. column to parcel ID and call it a day. Like, what if something for some odd reason like changes? 
like on the like what if there's like an easement that gets put on one of these and their frontage changes like is that going to be a problem are we going to have to re-update this I mean the frontage I don't know I'm just like totally I'm just like well, kind of the, the hypothetically saying do we want to put things the... in there that could potentially change yeah, and I don't... are any of these things things that could change I, th I think that just becomes a a thing that when that person tries to build on or subdivide, which is not going to happen, there's a the couple house. that could try to divide. But <laughs> then I think that becomes an, the question that then staff deals with. And, you know, you can't do that because you got this easement and now you've technically you're below, but you're grandfathered in, which nobody likes that term. But, yeah. okay. but it's, it's it describes what I like to say legal. Well, legal non conforming is better than I'll try to grandfather everything if you use that. Okay. So add parcel ID into the, the final file and call it a day and insert this somewhere into R2. Right? Yeah, I think that would work. You want to call it an appendix or put it at the end rather than? waste a page in the middle of the article i, I yeah i think that makes sense well i think it should probably it should be in that district though it should it could be the last page in that yeah district. yeah yeah, yeah. So but, after after where we've put in um that sentence about that shall not be expanded just refer to this table give it a table number or something Yeah. So there's a table number of whatever 9.01. Maybe. Um, yeah. So I'm still hazy on. So there are some lots that need to just go. Yes. All the yeah. Center Village add ones are in the historic district. So they do not need to be on this list. So one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And does that need to be referenced in the HCVR one, or does that I don't cover think so. it? They I are they're right, they're within the the boundary as described by the original plat yeah. and the okay. addition. Okay. And then if we flip that list over, uh, there are two thumbnail maps, um, one of Center Village area with the Fiesel ad, Fiesel ad number two in the Tibbs sub in a Harlem Village area uh, with Duncan Glen ad and Duncan Glen ad number two. Um, I I would like to see those two maps included in the appendix, uh, maybe even larger than they are. Um, the Harlem Village one, for example, cuts off uh, the bottom of, of the largest lot in that area. I'd like to see it expanded further south just so it includes um, that parcel at 60, 60 Mayfair Drive. But other than that, uh, to put in some, some reason for the color coding or to remove the color coding and just color code the ones that are um, shown in the, in the, in the list in the, uh, in the residential district. So it's clear what's in and what's out. Is that, is that okay with anybody else? That's okay with me if it's not too much of a pain for Scott to figure out. Yeah, well, I wouldn't do, I'm not sure I would do color anyway. I would do a bold outline or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, there's no color in the, in the resolution now. We don't want to add it. I mean, the thing that has tricked me is that the language... And we, we haven't gone through HCVR VR one, right? Okay. I think the language is supposed to say it applies to these plats, but it doesn't really it doesn't really say that. <laughs> it just needs to be more obvious because it just says all that are within these plats are legal residential lots. And it should say something like and the and the following, and this resolution, HDC, or this article shall apply. 
to them. Because it just says there are lots, which is fine. And then it says all site built dwellings on said legal residential lots at the effective date of this amendment to the zoning resolution shall be considered conforming residential structures. Well, mm. okay, but it doesn't say that that there that it is now hereby in mm. HCBR one. We intended it to. <laughs> well, the way it says and shall be, I mean, it's got all that language in there. It just isn't. That that's what confused me about whether it's an overlay or whether it's actually applicable to everything that's listed here yeah it was not designed as an overlay if we just add at the end of that um sentence where it says shall be considered legal residential lots just add within the hcv r1 district yeah would that cover it i think so i'll, I'll look at some of your other overlays and see how that try to use the same phrase so this isn't an overlay uh sorry uh, I mean, in a way it is, but it's an overlay that applies the day it gets adopted. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. the, the commercial, Center of Religious Commercial District is an overlay. That didn't just automatically apply. Yeah, it didn't yes. automatically apply. People yeah. have to apply to become a commercial property within that district. So that one too, we would have to. Oh yeah, and it says 0. 0.2 acres. On both the HCVR1 and the HCVC district, we need to specify the boundary. There's we go, we can work on that language. Um, I can I can send you my suggestions. So in the, the commercial district, Scott, in Article 16, we specify that the owner of any parcel Bless you. in this area, which we've just defined as the center village and center village addition, yeah. may elect to submit an application. Yeah, I just read that. Um, does that need to be specified any further? I mean, it does. I think that may be enough. I think it gives you the flexibility to obviously guess, they submit a development plan and you hear it. My only question with these then is since they're going off of a plat, where are those plats recorded? 
any auditor's office. If you look on on their website, it should say what what plat they're they're on. Okay. Okay. So that one's not an issue, but the nineteen article nineteen, we do need to add something about within the historic shall be considered legal residential lots within the HCBR yeah. district. <clears throat> When we get our new articles printed out, our new overlays, do we also get new binders and tabs? Because we're going to be out of tabs yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Hope so. Mike said we can request such. <laughs> A larger binder, more tabs. That addition to the HCBR will need to go through the normal changing process too. Can we lump it together with I don't see why not with our two and do both at the same time. Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> They're very closely related. Yes. You haven't initiated anything. No. Nope. Yeah. Right. Nope. So we haven't come to conclusions like <laughs> Okay. All right. It takes us well, except in the conservation. So with that figured out, can we finish up on R2 then and be finished with something? Yeah, I didn't change anything else. Okay. After we last spoke and we narrowed the side yard setback to, I don't remember when I changed that. I think we discussed it though, 15. Made it pretty hard to it seemed like that already violated a lot of people that were in there had less than a 15 foot side yard setback. So mm -hmm. 10 made it a little bit easier. People. Mm -hmm. um, I, as usual, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Um, so in section 9.02 at the very end, uh, land area zoned R2 low density, low density residential district as of this amendment. Wait, not... wait, I, I, I lost the end of the red. Okay. The end of the red on the first page. Yes. The last, the last sentence. Okay. Um, shall not be expanded. Um, do we need anything in there about infilled? Are there any gaps that would potentially fit that we want to allow for or not? I mean, I'm looking at the center village one and it looks like there are a couple of um, yellow areas within the brownish area. Um, and I don't know whether those are or how those are zoned and whether we need to allow for those. Maybe at some point somebody says, um, I mean, there's a long, narrow one that could be split, it looks to me like, into three lots that would match the surrounding lots out of one. Would, do we want to allow that? And I don't know which one that... That actually is, that looks like it's on 605. Maybe it's the one in the TIB subdivision that's 1.64 acres. I, I'm, I think he's talking about this one here. It looks like right. on, that, on that top map, it looks like you could split that into three parcels that would then be identical in size to all of the parcels surrounding them. And so do we want to allow them to do that at some point? My thought is they're already so small. Do we really need to allow anyone to go any smaller or can we just say this is how it is? Deal with it. Well, and that wouldn't impact that phrase that you read where it says it shall not be expanded. That just means it it won't apply to additional 
lands outside the existing area. I mean, those are two different questions. You may start with the question of, should it be able to be split? Which, I mean, it seems to me if somebody did that, they'd have to have sewer anyway. And maybe that does make sense to turn that into three and then they match everybody around them. Well, or does it just leave it up to our discretion as a zoning commission to say, because it says, uh, I think it would be a zoning inspector thing because then these rules apply. Yeah. And so then can they meet? Because if we took out the if they're in that acre and things like that, then then if they conform to the surrounding lots, you know, if they are still within this R2 district and match the character of the rest of R2. Well, couldn't, couldn't, yeah, if they're in sure. these additions that are listed as, as you know. I, I, I take back what I said because there is the language. We added the language that they shall not be further subdivided. Okay. That doesn't mean they couldn't come in and I guess they could go to the BZA at that point and say, that's for this says no further subdivided, but things have changed so much. So yeah, we have the language shall not be further subdivided in here. You say where is yeah. it? Nine oh six A and B. Six oh six A. Yeah, it says. Because we were trying to print. Okay. I say we leave it for now because I don't think this will be something that is a massive concern i mean there's even if we were to do that there are a very small number of lots that would even consider it because so many of these are so tiny as it is mm -hmm. and so i say if they want to go to the bza and ask for a variance go for it it may even be on the original plat as three pieces and they combine them through the auditor in which case they could go back they could probably argue uh, they were combined just for tax purposes i don't know I'd say leave it. I'm okay with leaving it as it is. Okay. Tom? No, I, you're right. So we'll just leave the word in the way it is. Um, going down to 9.03 um, under letter A. Uh, single family dwellings, parens limited to one single dwelling per parcel tract or lot, and parens. Um, everywhere else, we only talk about lots uh, in section 902, unless rezoned all lots which are located and um, going down to. Uh, can you, can you just tell me again where you are? 903A, right 903A. at the end. It talks about lots at the end of that sentence. DG, is there any way we can make Tom? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. He trouble. said we don't mention lot anywhere else. We just talk about parcel and track. No, no, we, we only talk about lot. Oh, we don't okay. talk about parcel or track. But, you know, and then in 906, we mm -hmm. talk about uh, residential lots and shall not be further subdivided in 906B. Uh, residential lots and their existing frontage shall not be decreased. Um, can we just take out parcel or tract and just leave it one single dwelling per lot? And, um, so there's nobody can try to wiggle and say what's a parcel, what's a tract, what's a lot. We only talk about lots. Sure. Any any objection? No. Uh, under 903.03D, uh, um, the third line, at the end of the third line, we talk about the user of said structure, temporary structure, shall obtain a, temp a, a permit for such temporary use. <clears throat> so I went back to the schedule of zoning fees, and we have no such permit. <laughs> um, 
do we need to update the schedule of zoning fees to include a temporary per, temporary structure permit? Is there something on the fee schedule that would work for here so we can just edit this instead of the fee schedule? <laughs> well, there's a trailer permit for six months and a trailer permit extension for another six months. Um, sign permits, remodeling. Um, okay, so so no. D, does, trailer. D does say a temporary structure such as a mobile office and a temporary building of non-residential character. We have nothing like that in the fee structure. I feel like the, I think it's a trailer. The trailer <laughs> permit it pretty much covers it. It's too bad the fee schedule can't say slash temporary structure. I think the fee structure I mean, could it's, say it's, that. it's online. <laughs> you could you could pull it up. So if you wanted to go uh, temporary structure or trailer, that that would that would work. I think that the the timing is the same six months and six months. Yeah, I think that. I will tell you that that paragraph is just copied directly out of FR1. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. That paragraph is the same in FR1 and A1. Yeah, I think, gonna, I think it's the fee schedule that needs to have the wording changed. Yeah. yeah. And that to the list. Okay. <laughs> We're seeing a It'll take us a whole two hours to figure that one out, too. Well, we might as well do it now before the first of the year because that's when we have to have everything in place. All right. Um, um, when I line this up against uh, the permitted uses, let me, let me go up here on my abstract spreadsheet. Permitted uses limited home occupation so uh, limited home occupation within a single family dwelling subject to certain provisions um, that exists in ar1 fr1 and hcvr1 they all have they all allow for limited home occupation as a permitted use here it's as a conditional use and we decided that because these houses are so close together and um, the lots are so small that home occupations really should be conditional uses. Why wouldn't we do the same then for HCBR? I think the lots are the lots, the lots of maybe a small. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Dance. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, I mean, limited home occupation is basically done inside the house. So the house is, it's, I don't know that it's going to affect anybody, any of the neighboring properties. I would say expanded, yeah, that's, that's a different. That, that would be, be fine to me. We just need to, to change to add the limited to permitted uses and change under conditional uses where it says home occupation, that, that, that is the expanded. Okay, so um, under conditional uses becomes expanded home occupation. And under permitted, permitted, we have F. to add up. We have to add up F, I guess, or something. There's limited home occupation, and just pick up the wording from um, 703H, 803F, 803E. Um, Why don't we we take it directly from the Center Village, the Harlem Center Village one? Okay. Um, at 1903E, where it is a permitted use. Scott, did you follow all that? Yeah, so where does that, where does the permitted use, the limited home occupation come from? So the limited home occupation would be under permitted use, uh, letter F. 
would be a, a new. Yeah, but where do I pull it from? It comes well, you pull it from 19, uh, section 19.03 E, e. Uh, which is limited home occupations within yeah. a single family dwelling. Okay. I, I know it's, yeah, I know it's in several places. I just, if you had one that I wanted, that, that would be the most comfortable could easily to, to this one. Yeah. Because it's, just so I didn't have to turn to it. Uh, if we're going to change HCVR to have within the HCVR district under application, we should change this letter E to just a single letter E. Yeah. Is there a misprint? Yes. Yeah. It's two E's. It's two E's. 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 Oh. Parentheses, uppercase E. Oops. Only one of the many changes to catch those things. It's so hard oh. when you look at things so many times you don't even see. So the expanded home use, I, I don't know that we even want. As conditional? Considering how small these are. Yeah. Because it allows trucks to come and go. Yeah. And these are not good roads for trucks. So can we just take out expanded? Um, I would be okay with that. Take out the home occupations under R2? 904. So that's 904 letter A. All of that goes out. Do so we want to leave things like kindergarten? Well, that's a separate. That's a separate decision. But I think just oh, yeah. expanded home occupation. Uh, there's nothing in HCVR for expanded home occupation. Only in AR and FR. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would be fine with moving a limited home occupation to a permitted use and removing. Expanded home occupation as a conditional use. It'd be okay with me too. Anybody object? Strongly? That's good. Weakly? <laughs> Do we want all these other uses though, since they are so small? Well, I think we already have. A church. Well, and you can't say no to churches anywhere, anyways. Yeah. Um, so, so going down to B, um, kindergartens and child care facilities, uh, we allow them in AR, we allow them in FR, we don't allow them as a conditional use in HCVR. So, I personally would say remove them. I mean, it's so small because this is going to be the same thing as an expanded home occupation. If you have parents driving in and out all day to pick up kids, like that's still an increase in traffic. And parking. Yeah. I I I mean I, I think it's it's a it's a it's a large use for a small parcel. And if and if that's something that's permitted under the commercial overlay for similar areas, then I feel like we have options for it. Mm -hmm. Like if you could do a, a kindergarten in the historic district, the HCVR, whatever. The so strike B? I would say yes. 9.04B. Yeah, the, they're, I don't believe child care facilities are listed in HCVR. Um, we can skip churches for a minute. Uh, number D, commercial playgrounds, play fields. Picnic areas, summer camps. Um, well, it includes other things like the water supply, and they got the water tower in Center Village. And that's allowed in all four districts, mm -hmm. including HCVR. So I guess that stays. Um, number E, group homes, um, is not allowed in AR, it is allowed as conditional use in FR, and in R2, 
not allowed in HCVR. Um, I think a group home is the same considerations in my in my eyes as a um, as they as a daycare facility, a child care facility. I I don't have obviously everything in front of me, but there's some there's something in the high rise code that I don't know. I don't think I would tinker with that just because there's some requirement that any of your residential and and I can recheck it to make sure that they have if they allow any limitation on it. But it's one of those things like churches that says for group homes specifically. Yeah, if you have residential uses, if you have residential districts, then you have to allow. And there's like three different classes, an eight or not more than eight, so it's eight or less is like the least. You know, it's one of those federal mm -hmm. regulations that the RC has, and so I, I don't know. I don't think you're going to see that, but I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't take it out. Okay, but if you could get that for us, because then we'll have to fix HCVR, and we'll have to fix AR. Okay, we yeah, I, don't, I don't know how broad that is, but several years ago we tried to do a. We looked at the language to see, it, and they change it as with. Some things in the Ohio Revised Code haven't changed since the 50s. And some things they, once you finally think you know what it means, then they go and tinker with it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll check on that. Okay. Um, these churches, um, so this is churches or other places of worship on not less than one acre. So there are only four parcels in this whole list that are more than one acre. And there's only one that's three acres. So I don't see it as a, I mean, we've got, we've got churches in AR and, and FR, not in HCVR. Um, I suppose, you know, getting a, a hundred seats, 40 or 50 cars, uh, it's kind of crazy, but. I say leave it in there because I think it's another thing that Ohio Revised Code won't really let us mess yeah, with. You're not and they have to provide it. adequate off-street parking, which none of these places are going to be able to do anyway. So yeah, they're going to run into a dead end whether we have this in there or not, I think. Yeah. Um, adequate off-street parking. Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, bed and breakfasts. That's allowed um, in HCVR. Yeah. And that one's F. Uh, that's allowed almost across the board. Or it is allowed across the board. Um, 904G, did that come out? I don't see that anymore. Model homes? We had already taken that out. Let me take it out from here. Clear. Yeah. The one I have is marked, marked out. So we so um, these are going to have to be renumbered. But so we've got what was uh, A and B are out. C stays. D stays. Well, C, C, D, and E become A, B, C. And and bed and breakfast stays. H so becomes four, D. That's easy. Four conditional uses. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, and as long as we have adequate off-street parking, uh... a lot of these things that we're including just are unlikely to ever happen yeah, because I agree. they they yes. just going to work. But I don't see any reason to to have so much angst over whether they are in or not. Mm -hmm. All right, I would just change uh, what was F three and just add the word adequate off-street parking. Um, prohibited for bed and breakfasts, you mean? Yes, that would be in um, F3 parking. So we're yeah. just adding the word adequate, yes. Actually, I think it's going to be D, yeah. Either way, D. currently it's H, right? Yeah, currently okay. H just will be D. <laughs> I'm clear. Keep using random letters. It's real confusing. 
Okay, prohibited. Um, A, B, okay. B, okay. Um, C, a trailer of any type parked in front of a building line for more than 24 hours in any 10 day, in any 10 days. Yeah, my copy says 48 hours. Um, yes, that was changed. Um, 48 hours. That is an outlier. The only place that shows up is in this district, not an AR, not an FR, not an HCVR. Um, why here and why not in the others? I don't know. I don't know. Um, trailer, boat, motorhome, or equipment. Um, then that in that, in, I guess that 10 day period is, is gone too. If it's not anywhere else, can we just take it out of this one? Well, why do we want to take it out though? Why don't we want it? Why I mean, don't we want about, it anywhere else? I don't know. Think about parking a boat in front of one of those houses over there. That would like take up the whole street. Yeah, so that's I what mean, I'm saying. Just take it out. Don't allow them to park in front of the house. Well, but then that taking it out, doesn't that mean you could do it? There's no restriction. Yeah, if it's not prohibited, it's no, no, if it's permitted, it's not for. Um, we do have um trailer of any type, boats, motorhomes, or equipment parked in front of the front of the building line. Uh not where does that show up? Hang on. E. Uh that's in um Article 16, Historic Center Village Commercial District, uh, neighborhood office district um neighborhood commercial district so planned commercial and office so none of the real residential districts um allow you to park a trailer of any type boats motorhomes or equipment in front of the front building line for any period of time hours or days it's just prohibited and i that's, would that's what I'm, I'm saying. saying just, out, just take about 48, 48 hours. 48, yeah. But keep the rest of it in. Yeah, that's fine. Essentially, a uh, uh, trailer of any type. Um, I, I guess I would add boats, motorhomes, and equipment just to make it compatible with all the other ones. Um, and just, um, yeah, or, you know. I mean, Within this district for any period? Period? Yes. There's a district period. Yeah. Yeah. Just cut out, just take out four period exceeding 48 hours. Trailer of any type. Uh, if we, if you want boats, boats, motorhomes. Where where are you where now? Are you I'm, I'm picking it up from um, from another. Uh, let me tell you which ones I picked it the up. The clean from. copy we have already says no trailer, boat, motorhome, or equipment of any type. Ah, okay. Okay. So does the marked up one. So yeah. I, I, that's just, that's been I what the language agree. is. I don't know. Okay. Then. I'm just comparing it to FR1. It's, it's odd how similar and yet there's, I can't, okay. there's something. It's that's, there. Yeah, but it's not like it just picks up with the next one though. Then it's, then the next two are like flopped. It doesn't matter. I don't want to go down that. <laughs> it's just weird. Maybe I can flop them back to make them more similar. So that they're in the same order? Mm. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Right? Uh, what else, Tom? Um, I 
then number G, if I'm, if I'm um, at the end of that, you know, it allows keeping of animals for youth club activities, such as 4-H, FFA, or similar groups, which shall be a permitted use in the R2 district. That's great. I agree with it. But it's not a permitted use in the R2 district. Do we need to go back and add something into the permitted uses for keeping of livestock and poultry? For I, I, think, I think keeping it in, in this part, um, it, it allows it for that, but it doesn't make it real obvious. And I think I would prefer that rather than moving it to permitted. Because it only permits it for things like 4-H. <laughs> yes. That sort of thing. Yes. So keeping it here, I think, keeps that distinction. Okay. I don't think it matters. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, then that, that's, that's, that's it in terms of, of permitted uses or conditional or prohibited. And I don't have a lot about development standards. Um, just in terms of formatting, um, this, is, this is on Scott, um, where we have numbers. Sometimes we have letters written out, sometimes we don't. You wanna, you wanna do the drudge work of going in and fixing those? So like under C, he wants 35 written out in words and then the number 35 in parentheses. Yeah, I can, I can try to catch him. There's a fair number of those and I don't want to have to go through them, but. Please don't. <laughs> no, I won't. Promise. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when we cite the ORC, we cite it in a lot of different ways. Is there a standard way you would like you know, um, section whatever of the Ohio Revised Code, or or did we already have a, we may already have a standard in the overlay districts. You save space to say ORC 711-131. But I don't know if that's how it's been referenced in other. Well, here just under the prohibited uses H yeah. and I, we have two different ways of. <laughs> Dating. Section 5.211 of the ORC. Yeah, that, that was the one I was looking at. Ohio, 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 chapter 3796. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do like a global and try to catch those. Yes. I'm done. <laughs> okay. All righty. What else? So are you comfortable with all that so far? Sure. Like <laughs> you were taking good notes. Yes, I'm pretty pretty well satisfied that we beat R2 to death. Yeah. Yep. I think it's good. So then hopefully what November's meeting. Can we vote on it then? We can't vote with three people. We can, but it's not. We don't have a clean copy oh, in front of us yeah. to vote on. I see. That would only initiate it. Yeah. And then you'd have to have another meeting to adopt it, right? Yeah, we might as well wait till we have several of these things together. I mean, you have P PRCD at this point, right? Yeah. Did we start with FR1? <laughs> Did we do FR1? I don't think we've done FR1 yet. It was snowy when we started, right? So. <laughs> sort of with the PRCD, didn't we? I did have to go look back at my files. Yes. Just comparing it to the other things mostly. Did we? I don't think we ever finished the FR1 stuff. I don't think we did either. I don't know. And then we decided that we were going to have more issues with the smaller lots okay. with yeah. sewers coming in. Right. 
would be misremembered. Yeah, I still, I, my upper one has scribbles all through it because we started talking about things and that didn't happen. Yeah. I don't think we ever voted on it or anything. No, I'm not sure we made it all the way through. Here, do we want to move into the PRD and look at what Scott's done now? Okay. We've got a little bit of time. Yeah. You want to look at the procedure or the PRD? Hmm. Um, let me try to find the procedure. Oh, the procedure. They're on the same deck, right? Yeah. The PRD's first. Procedures. Okay. Procedure. So the procedure will be a, a whole new article. Is that right? Run out of numbers. <laughs> I think they are. But... Well, I said we're going to need new tabs. We're already up to what thirty five. I'm going to thirty one tabs. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We have enough. Tabs so one tab that one. says That's a lot of red. I think we have one reserved there. for open for future Wait, use. We only have one of them. Yeah, there's one. Well, okay. Oh boy. And then thirty one is currently empty, so we have two tabs to fill. But basically, we're going to need new binders after this. So we're those may actually be your the ones that just went through. I don't think we put one as 23, did we? I don't think so. Mm. I think they were all 30 something. Yeah. So yeah. So 23 oh. is hypothetically still blank. Okay. Which at this rate, the order, I mean, whew, it's all, all messed up, but yeah. Not much. It never do doesn't it. make as much sense as it used to. Okay. Also, not much sense in trying to reorder it though, because we're going to keep adding new stuff and it's going to keep messing it up. So, yeah, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know, Scott. Uh, it doesn't matter really to me. They start with the PRD first or the procedure, although the procedure is like practically all new. It looks like yeah. Well, maybe going through the PRD is easy. Maybe we, we can should start with the PRD. Yeah. yeah, I think. I <laughs> know. I looked at that. I was like, "That's a lot of red." <laughs> oh my god. I know Brittany started the countdown over there again. <laughs> Good close to it. Two hours. Oh God. <laughs> well, so all I really changed. Let's see. I went through permitted uses and just made it not. I don't see a problem with single family, and I don't know. I don't know what semi-detached is really, but I mean, you know, attached. I guess you could say semi-detached or single-family condos, which is popular these days. I thought condos was getting us into issues, though, because that's an ownership. Method. Well, and I didn't put I didn't put condos not in there. Okay. Attached, modular. That's just the way they're built. That's not. There's nothing about the way they look. Cluster is just the fact that you have smaller lots. So I mean, there's nothing you can point to and say, "Well, that's cluster," and these aren't. Mm. Okay. Common wall. But just try to trying to take out the assumption that you don't want two story apartments in this district because there are other places where those can go. Well, not everywhere, but in the other overlays. But I don't see single story in there. Well, it says single family. That's completely different from a single story. In fact, you could have single story, you know. Duplex. Well, that's attached. And common wall. There's nothing to prevent single story. Mm -hmm. I just think by taking out the multifamily, that gets gets rid of the apartments, right? That was the goal. Yeah, that sounds right. I think at that density, you wouldn't have people Blank trying to do sure. apartments anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here we have our uh, temporary structure zoning permit that doesn't have a fee again. But we're fixing that in the fees, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the fees can be changed. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's no, I mean, it's every time I see a plan district that has this home occupation language. I mean, the, the developer is going to choose whether they allow home occupations in the deed restrictions anyway. And then they're going to write in a bunch of different, <laughs> potentially different language. But last time I asked about deed restrictions, though, I feel like I sort of got. Well, and, and that's not something that is the deed restrictions answer. Which is not something that we regulate or that you manage or regulate. And the township doesn't. I mean, they defer any question on deed restrictions to consult your attorney or whatever. Yeah. But I'm just saying from a standpoint of. We could get all caught up in adding the limited home occupation as a permitted use and the expanded home occupation as a conditional use. But when a project actually comes in, you're going to adopt their version of the PRD language. Yes. And if they limit, limited, you know, a neighborhood usually doesn't want expanded, expanded home occupations yeah. because it's a neighborhood yeah. and not just FR1. So that's why it's only under conditional use. Okay. And I didn't compare this, but it okay. it seems more like the limited home occupation, even though it's a conditional use, because no person who's not a resident may participate. Right. And we've run into this before where we, in the resolution, refer to home occupation, limited home occupation, and expanded home occupation. And sometimes they sort of differ between the three of them, which at one point we tried to look at getting those to all be the same, but you can see how far we get. Out. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fine to just have what you have under conditional uses here for these home occupations. There are some things like there's a there's a 400 square feet that doesn't have the words 400 written out if we want to get that picky about that. <laughs> Fuck, I'll, 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 I'll. <laughs> that said you would look through for those. Okay, so we've got the group homes as conditional. I'm going to check that number because now it says six and the other one said eight. So I'm going to okay. try to figure that out. Okay. Prohibited uses. So this has the no trailer, boat, motor home, whatever, for 24 hours? Yeah. Can we just say it all? Key. I mean, hypothetically, there's not anywhere in the township where we really want somebody parking their boat in front of their house, right? No motor home. Well, you can park it behind your house, just not in front of your house. Yeah. So can we get rid of that just like we did in the last one? On any parcel within this district, period. I'm okay with that. You could if you choose to. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I can't think of a reason why you know the the boat lobby would come out and say yeah. you can't. But you know, boats to the back. These 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 PRDs are likely to have their own roads. Yeah. So. You know, it's going to be governed by the homeowners association. But does it also have something to do? with emergency services or no? Like if you have boats parked all over the place, is that a problem to get through? Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, no, because they will have already restricted what sides of the street you're allowed to park on. Right. And a boat shouldn't be any wider than like your average trailer yeah. as it is. Or, or yeah. an SUV. I'm thinking this is more likely in the driveway or they pave another side to the driveway and put it there I'm, and it's taller than that I, I think I think letting them park the boat there for 24 hours where they're you know loading and unloading and same with trailers and stuff um on a driveway in front of their house oh so this is like in their driveway yeah 
I was saying it was like on the street. Well, it can be, but it doesn't say that. But it's anywhere in front of the front building line. Okay. So like in front of the the house. house. Okay. So if your driveway's, you know, in front of the house. Yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. In that case, I was thinking about it differently. I'm not going to lose sleep over it either way. (laughs) Carry on. We're going to leave it the way it is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now we get into the red. What did we change in the development standards here? Yeah. So um, um, at eleven oh five, I don't think you had a minimum development size because it's all red. I don't have the old version in front of me. It did. Um, PRD. I have subdivisions regardless of size. With adequate roadways, central water, and sewer. Thanks. So any size. Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, was that in the original, Tom? Yes. And whether it's still in here, I would have to search. It goes through all the procedures first. And then it gets to the development standards. That's why you can't look at the original. Yeah. So development standards. No, it does not have a minimum development size. Oh, boy. So we want it to. So then I added 10 acres. I think we did talk about how this was sort of a good go-between option for people who didn't have... The 25 acres to do a PRCD, mm-hmm. but had enough land that maybe doing just a straight rezone was not the most efficient. So I'm fine with 10 acres. Are we living? In? You're talking about one and a half dwelling units per gross acre. So a 10 acre. Seven and a half buildings. I think um, in the overlay districts, we pulled out net developable acreage instead of gross. Um, And the That way, they have to also exclude their open space first, though, right? No. Or no? No, that's not. I would have to go back to 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 verify that. It, it just um, we had a long conversation about total gross or net developable and how we do the calculation of uh, density. It was not so much on open space, it was more on the density. Um, And um, the open space, the open space may have been on the gross acreage and then you could take credit for uh, power lines, area under power lines, you could take credit for uh, um, drainage swales and water features and all kinds of stuff. But it was more than, obviously more than 20%. Um, I, w- I will go back and, and, and look at the wording on, on what we have on the, the PRCD and the CRCD. 
the new language in red's got looks kind of similar to what i <laughs> <heard. laughs> Excuse me. from the conservation i'm population. imagining you probably took it from the prcd did you not well prop my i'd like to say that i did <laughs> and, and I, I like it much better than what we had before I always thought fifteen thousandths of an acre per dwelling unit was <laughs> ridiculous to try to figure out, right? And ridiculously small. Yes. Yes. So I I actually like what you have here. Well, and I think that 15%, I I don't think I have the new PRCD in front of me, but I think it I think it looks just like that. That's, what I can that's not it. Well, not exactly. I mean, I brought it from a different township, but they're all mm -hmm. children of the original <laughs> yeah. grandparent. So... And it does it toward the end. I mean, it, it allows land under high tension power lines to count mm -hmm. as long as that doesn't exceed 15% of the total open space required. And then that, wherever I pulled it, it had something in there about easements for water courses and other similar channels. Yep. I just thought as an easement's a dotted line on a paper which goes on either side of a drainage area. As long as the people in the neighborhood can still access it, then who cares if there's a dotted line on there? I mean, it's yeah. it should not count as open space. It just seems like a punishment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, I, I, this yeah, season. I, mean, I think you know on the on the PRCDs. I think all of that is is calculated as part of the open space. Yeah. Uh, so um, on the minimum development size, where we say 10 acres, is there any reason to go down to five to say, if somebody wants to, and maybe thinking about it probably doesn't make any sense because it's just, there's just not enough room to work with really. Yeah, it'd be, no, I don't see anybody wanting to do that. Yeah. Certainly not a developer. Yeah. Um, I'm okay leaving it the way it is. That's fine with me. So I guess the only the only thing in under B is is let me go back and the maximum density shall be one point five dwelling units per. Uh, I think we 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 use net developable acres in that in that density calculation. Um, and I think that's what we use even in the straight zoning districts. Although not consistently. Um, okay. Uh, what does it say now? Oh. Here, so then do you define net in your definitions? Yes. Did if we, we don't already we we have it? it in proposed additions to the definitions. Yeah. So I don't know whether it's gotten passed through the system yet or not, but... We, we have it somewhere. Have written it out to to be added somewhere. Okay, I'll I'll pick up wherever else it's referenced and reference it in the same way because it'll probably say in accordance with. Yeah, it's in your definitions. Developable area is in the definition that I have. Yeah. What's that? With acreage and 
um, parentheses. Yeah. Article four. So I looked around at some of the other current subdivisions going in in the county because, you know, the trend is for smaller lots. I mean, it always has been, but especially the market and supposedly people don't want to maintain a lot of yard, which is fine. I was gonna say I'm people. <laughs> I'm letting more and more just go back to meadow. I'm like, I don't I'm not doing it. But so you don't you... want a house back there. Somebody else has a house back there. No, that's true. See? But I'm it's and you've got power lines. That's also there. there. And now poison Big hemlock and probably some other things that I shouldn't yeah. have. A bunch of tansy that's invasive, but it's too much to deal with. So your current language doesn't really even have lot sizes and frontage so a pick 65 feet is frontage and even though 8500 seems small and it is but that's still 130 150 feet deep so keller pines is the only prd we have currently right mm -hmm. does, uh, does adding that frontage make keller pines non-conforming oh but this any change you make to this isn't going to change it because it's in place and they have their own the day they adopted district. it. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was approved. Um, how much of an acre is 8,500 square feet? Um, 8,500 divided by 43, so I have 60. I'm with the uh, right. Just shy of two tenths. Okay. So these are about the size of uh, lots in Center Village. Pretty much. Which are about two tenths of an acre. Mm -hmm. um, it would be 87.12 would be two tenths. But they were using a uh, different frontage back then. They were using chains. Um, I think two chains, 66 feet. Bits. Yeah. And then four chains deep. <clears throat> okay. So so residences would have about two tenths of an acre, but the, if it's a ten acre track size, two acres of that would be open space. Left open for open space. Yeah, you might get 32, 34 houses. If you take uh, 43, 5, 60, times 0.8 that leaves you with 34848 and you say take 10% off that for roads you're down to 313 divided by 8500 um 36 I think um I mean it's a lot and especially if you're not looking to cluster anything if if basically a planned district all it means is straight roads Houses all the same size, all the same roof angle, all the same setback from the road. Um, it's a look that we're trying to avoid. Um, but, you know, how much do you want to impose on a planned district that's not a conservation district? I think I want to impose a little more. <laughs> I mean, these are minimum, so they can obviously do larger lots and I think design and roof angle that we could there are some things that could be added 
Yeah. Just, you know, and usually it's not super specific, but, you know, care shall be taken to. Uh, visual interest. Yeah. I mean, we're basically so talking child. city lot size Yeah, on these things. And I'm, I'm not a real fan of city lot sizes or city lot houses. Um, then at that rate, uh, would what it be better to lower way. PRCD minimum acreage so that we can get more conservation districts and fewer PRDs? That's what I saw this as, is the nobody's going to be doing the 30-acre or 100-acre Because the PRCD is more desirable. And higher density. Yeah. And so this would kind of be for that in between. So maybe we can tweak the lot size. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the minimum lot sizes on the uh, um, some of the other the clustered conservation districts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are saying this has to have sewer, so so there's that restriction. Um, and um, yeah, I mean maybe maybe we can we can run closer to ten thousand square feet per per lot, and uh, and put in something about the homes have to have you know adjacent homes have to be built to a different model different design whatever roof angles and setbacks from the road even even in the prcd we've got a, a five foot variation from one house to the next i'm not sure whether that's going to work or not, whether it's I can enough. Pull some some building design standards out of uh, some of the um uh, that southern border area that mixed use area yeah Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I'll maybe taking it up to 70 feet of frontage and a depth of 140 feet gets it almost to 10,000 square feet. So what, what was that again? 70, 70 feet of frontage and 145 feet of depth. Oh, okay. That would give us uh, 145 times 70. That's 10,150. Excuse me. And that would be uh, uh, point two three acre. Point two three three acre. Um, Divided by 0.233. Only have 1.5 dwelling units per acre. Yeah, so that's that's four four dwelling units per gross acre. Um, so more than likely three if we're talking net. Yeah. But we we already have under B maximum density is one and a half dwelling units per whatever we decide to do. Yeah, they do the math to get the number. And then that's just the design. And if they end up with more open space because they choose to make the lots this small, then that's what they do. Pretty much every PRD we see has more open space. Really? Even though they then required, but they push for higher densities too. Mm -hmm. And they say, but look what we're doing. We're giving you more open space. And that's a decent <laughs> argument. <laughs> At least they're giving something back. Um, but yeah, it's odd. Nobody nobody skirts and tries to say a little less open space than required because I think they're pushing for the smaller city lots. Okay. But quarter acre is more suburban. I mean, it's more this, the, this PRD, this allows for more units per acre, smaller lots than the PRCD, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was thinking about that. Yeah. In the right way. But less, but less than the 
R2. The CRCB. No, what is the, oh, the CRC? The new the one. Mixed use. The new one yeah, is the, the, the cluster the clustered residential conservation district is actually okay. uh grow is uh three dwelling units per NDA. Okay. Got it. And um as a practical matter, it's probably more like two and a half. But it also has a lot more open space. So the lot sizes, you know, you tend to shrink the lot size because you've got almost an equivalent in open space for every every lot. So even if you have like on the PRCD, you have one acre lots and one acre of open space for every for for every every building lot, um, even a little more. So um, I want to run this past some some folks who've done this more than I have, and see what the uh, what what the where, where the where where they wiggle out of it or how they wiggle out of it. In the side yard and rear are pretty typical. Mm -hmm. In the front, actually, I, I think it's more like Keller Pines, which I think some of these subdivisions push, some of the regulations push the front yard back farther than necessary. So I think 30 minutes. Uh, rear 25. Side yard, seven and a half. Um, and and what is the front? Is the, oh, front, thirty feet. Should reorder those because front's probably more important. Yeah. Well, I'll put I'll put them in front, side, and rear order. So how many of these, let's say on 10 acre parcel, um, can you get more, th uh, uh, more than a, a standard CAD would allow? You think we can, the developer can squeeze more than five houses on something like this? Uh, if, they had, if they had sewer, probably. Yeah. I'm saying 10 times 0.2. But you got to take out the open space. Yeah. You take out the open space, you're down to eight. You take right. out the roads, you're down to maybe seven, seven a little, maybe not even that much. Um, and then you, um, uh, you divide that by, I don't know what we can do. It would be 30 houses, my 30 houses on a 10 acre parcel. That uh, no, then you're you're multiplying seven by 1.5. And so you're getting 10 and a half. Yeah. Half. Yeah, okay. So seven you, point and at that point you can't do a CAD. You can only do a CAD for five lots. So yeah. you have to pay so for that. So that would be, yeah. So at, at 1.5 dwelling units per let's say net developable acres and you have seven acres, you're down to about 10 houses. Yeah. It's not a cat. It's, it's gotta be a, a subdivision and, and it's gotta really go through your engineering side, mm -hmm. and your planning side for all of that. Okay. I gotta, I gotta remember this, this one and a half dwelling units because that's really what's, what's going to control the density. And then I put additional, some, I don't know if it's your code, but some of these codes have something called additional setback, which I think I reworded to make it make more sense, which it's essentially a setback against the existing road, which your conservation hmm. has too, because you don't want that first house to be 
seven and a half right. feet right <laughs> from, from their side the yard road. because then they're right there yeah and the perimeter is 50 i mean it could be 100 as well but then that starts i don't know 50 gives them more flexibility if they're next to other houses or not here cd is 50 the perimeter mm -hmm. maybe I, maybe i saw that So if if that's the case, especially the perimeter area, um, where you'll probably have a good bit of your open space will be around the perimeter. Yeah. Um, does it make sense to? And maybe you've got it in here. I didn't see it. Um, that the open space has got to be connected somehow. Active recreation, passive recreation, preservation of natural site, combination, appropriate, topography unimproved. Connection to the, like if the neighbor has open space, then they be connected. Well, I mean, especially, you know, if you've got a lot of open space around the perimeter of the, of the parcel, uh, you're starting to get towards that clustered residential where all the, the, uh, the homes are in the middle of the parcel or off you know, off on one side, but clustered together. Yeah. Uh, and that way the, the open space is actually not just strung along in little tiny um, um, squares here yeah. and there, but it's actually got some connectivity that you can build uh, a walking path or, you know, some, something like that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the other thing that we ran into uh, that was a surprise uh, was the post office is no longer allowing individual post office boxes. Yeah. In these kinds of developments, there has to be a clustered mailbox. Right. Yeah. What we, what we should do is we should add that to the procedure section as a requirement of the development plan, which I've Forgot to do, but I can add that. Under the uh, procedures for plant for rezoning. Yeah, just have that as an as an item that they have to show you, and not try to regulate where it goes. Just that they need to include a plan for it. Yeah, because we just found that. I mean, you can make an argument to put it way in the back where the cul de sac is, or put it up front, but then you're close to the. Intersecting it road, like right the middle, isn't it? Where the little, yeah, where the road splits. Yeah, because I think there's some open space there, and so that's a good place for people to turn around. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's where you start um, requiring sidewalks, which we're trying to avoid. Um, and yeah, you know, enough room for for not just a, um, a passenger car, but probably. A, um, a UPS or an Amazon truck to uh, to pull in and and drop their packages. Yes. So uh, ten or twelve mailboxes don't really give you much of a cluster or much room for that kind of activity. And I think you may need it uh, some kind of turnaround and something like that. You know. But the design of that, I think. It, it should be in the de development plan. Yes. Yeah, we at the county level we talked about that when it first started. You know, it's funny when the I think it was actually the Sunbury postmaster that sent a note and said, "Hey, we'd appreciate it if you'd help us try to enforce that." And that generated like ten different questions of, "Well, what are the standards? And is there a handicap ramp? And do you want to pull off?" And, and they never responded to anything. <laughs> And then it turns out that the well, the post office doesn't want to be on record requiring it. They just want to say it's required and everybody's kind of going along with it. So technically it's not required. Which is why we don't have standards. We just say if if required, then you need to show. But anyway, as part of those conversations, then you know if 
someone says, well, well, you should have an, you should have a pull off or you should have a parking area. Or you should have a little cover. Well, then that's, that's just more stuff that the homeowners have to maintain Yeah. because the township isn't going to plow that pull off or the sidewalk. So it just, it's into all sorts of issues. And that's why we've, I mean, the city of Delaware has several pages of here's how they shall be designed, but Townships are so varied in whether it's curb and gutter or open ditch or small or large that we just haven't, I don't think, and I mean, they could change, but I don't think the county engineer wants to say, here's how they should be designed. So all that to say, I can put something in there. <laughs> you just want to put it back on the, on the developer and say, show us what you're going to do so that you can at least think about yeah. it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think I heard that that on the Steiner development, um, they made them put one in, and that kind of you know snowballed into where you're going to put it and where you're going to have to turn around, you know, wide enough and sidewalks and all kind, you know, it just it got out of hand. But but maybe that's because there really are no regulations, and they just keep changing the. I think what we ended up with is fine. I don't know what we ended up with yet. Joe hasn't come back to us with the final, final development plan. The last thing we talked. <laughs> We're getting close yeah. to the time. So, I mean, the only other changes there on that last page, I just, again, had that, had all those development plan requirements all in a row. And so there wasn't any reference to floodplains, but you already covered that in 21. And that external impacts, which we, I think we moved that a long time ago, where it talks about noise and vibration. Uh, where, where is that? I'm, refer I'm referencing it on the last page under J. But where it sends you is 2116, mm -hmm. which I think is that's just development standards. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And we either moved that a long time ago or that's we're doing it now. All that that weird stuff that's from the original code with vibrations and speed doing that now because it's there isn't a twenty one sixteen okay. book. Well, I didn't make that up, so it must be in my uh whole version that has all the changes, which I need to create a new one because I'm doing way too much flipping around. Okay. Yeah. I don't think not have the Yeah, you're right. There isn't a turn on Uh Joni. Yeah. Nine thirty. Yeah. Do you want me to make the changes we made tonight and then get them out to you? Yes, please. Yeah. And a more clean version, another clean version. And then I think we can move R two forward next time, hopefully. I think so. Go from there. Thank you, Scott. Yes, thank you very much. Sure. It does feel like we're making some progress. Yeah, that's true. I think so. Um. When will we see you next? What time? November. Uh, second Monday in November. The next time we'll see Scott? November yeah. 13th. 13th, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that will be back here, right? Yeah. Only the Only the 6th, 6th is, is at the Grange because election day is the next day yep. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we get kicked out of here for the yeah. 6th. Okay. Okay. All righty. We'll see you in November. And thank you so much again, Scott. Sure. Thank you. Can I make a motion that we adjourn? Second. Oh. We have a motion and a second to adjourn at uh, 930. 931. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. In favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And wish us luck. We're moving our offices on October 20th. Oh, boy. <laughs> Where are you going?
to the old Center North on a 521, just east of town where Oakland Nursery is. Oh, okay, okay. So they renovated that whole state. Town engineer, sanitary engineer, full of water, us. Oh, boy. Oh. Because the old, the old Sutherland water didn't have a very big space, as I know. They were kind of in the basement. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. It'll be fun. Thanks. <laughs> right. Look forward to seeing it. Everybody up. <laughs>